some more news and in all good news today coming from NASCAR and it seems like we've had a lot of this this season so far where there's a day of good news and it's full of good news it's not just one good thing it's a lot of different good things so the first thing actually comes in terms of the schedule this has been a huge talk since Jim France has taken over the schedule change how they want to try and change tracks for the 2020 season to lead into different tracks in 2021 and beyond maybe shorter schedules and whatnot moving tracks around the big thing is that uh, today uh, we've learned that there is a possible rumor and uh, a possibility that NASCAR will go directly from the Daytona 500 and then to the second race of the season go out west to start the West Coast swing and then have Atlanta push back further in the uh, season, which in my opinion is a great, great, great uh, just thing to have because you think about it, we go to Atlanta in late February, early March, that's all it's ever been. Uh, since 2014, you know, and that is horrible weather weekend. You know, I think the only time it's ever been a nice weekend in all, like every day that that weekend was nice was 2016. You know, in 2015 it was cloudy and dreary. You know, in tw in 2016 it was fine. 2017, once again, cloudy, dreary. It wasn't really anything nice. 2018 it rained. This year it, it rained. Uh, the only nice day was Sunday. Um, so. I mean, I think it is a smart move to just go straight out west, you know, start with, you know, Daytona, then go to Vegas, Phoenix, Auto Club, and then come back to the East Coast, do some races there, and maybe have Atlanta, you know, in May, late April, May. You know, I feel like that would be perfect because, in all, I feel like that would, you know, better weather, better sales. You know, if you have, uh, you know, a day where it's cloudy and 50 degrees, um, you know, that's not going to sell many tickets. But if you have a day where it's, you know, 60, 70 degrees, sunny, some clouds, you know, that is a perfect day for a race. And I will say that, you know, last year when I went to Pocono for both races, uh, you know, you had the uh, first race, which was actually a little chilly. I actually had to bring a hoodie uh, to the race because it was like 50 degrees and cloudy. And then the one later in the season was like 60 degrees and sunny. And it was a beautiful day. Um, so uh, Pocono got really lucky with the weather last year. But I mean, I would rather go to a race where it's actually 60 and sunny and it actually kind of feels like, you know, 70 at that point than go to a race where it's 50 and cloudy because that's a little dreary. Even though it does feel nice, it's still just, I don't know, it's just a little dreary. I like to be out in the sun a little bit more if I'm going to be going to a race. Um, so that's just interesting. More scheduled talk. This has been a huge, you know, discussion over the past, you know, what what's going to move, where are tracks going to move to, all that. You know, we have apparently Ve Vegas shared a uh, thing with its uh, fans where it was like advertising for Octo an October race and also advertising for a March race, but said dates to be announced. So that's interesting. We're coming up on a time now where, you know, NASCAR is a time frame for when they have to release the schedule. And uh, that time frame is April. So in April, we should probably know, um, you know, when tracks have their races, what the schedule is going to shape up for 2020. It's actually going to be very exciting because schedule change can never have too much change in terms of the schedule because I feel like that's something that needs to be changed on a, a basis of you know a, a few years because it gets stale if you have it for more than a few years. Another thing NASCAR announced is that the award ceremony that's held at the end of the season it used to be in Vegas for a long long time before that was in New York is now going to be in Nashville. So we've had a lot of talk about Nashville as well with the fairgrounds possibly coming back and how that racetrack is trying to make its comeback. Uh, you know SMI was looking into buying into it. Um, and possibly having, you know, N NASCAR state that possibly an all-star race could take place there in the near future. Now the award ceremony is in Nashville, and that is a great step forward for that fairgrounds ra raceway to come back into, um, you know, to, to, to just be raceable again by NASCAR. If you have the award ceremony in a town that has a racetrack like that, you're probably going to get a race there at some point in the near future. Uh, so I believe that this is a great move all around for NASCAR. You know, not only do the, you know, no one has to really make the move all the way out west now for the award ceremony. It's on the East Coast. It's only a few states over, uh, you know, for, from the race shops and all that. So I think it's a, a very, very good move by NASCAR. It's a big city, too. That city's on the boom. Um, so that, that's just great. And if we could get a race, an all-star race there at the fairgrounds, that would be even better. So uh, I look for that to possibly happen in the near future as well so that's another great great news thing and finally notice today that nascar the nascar channel uploaded a 
full truck race replay on YouTube, the first time they've ever done it since they've started uploading full race replays, which is very interesting, and it kind of ties back into, you know, the, the, the things with the whole old races getting deleted from YouTube and all that. Is NASCAR going to start and try to make a possible online service where it's old NASCAR races or something like that? Because... What have they been doing? They've been uploading full races since 2014. They've just now doing, started doing truck races. Uh, this year, because Fox uh, isn't uh, broadcasting any practice before 3 p.m., NASCAR is uploading basically every practice and every qualifying session from the weekend to their YouTube channel. That is huge. That is a huge step forward in you know, some of this stuff. I have always said if there was a you know, NASCAR based subscription thing where you had to pay this certain amount f f for a month and you got to watch like old races and all this stuff, I would absolutely subscribe to it because that is, you know, so much. If I could just put a race on the background, listen to it while doing something else, absolutely do it. So I feel like this is possibly a step towards the direction of NASCAR making a subscription based service, NASCAR uploading full races to their YouTube channel from older, you know, 2003, 2004, 2019, whatever. Um, so it's another great thing by NASCAR. That's three big, you know, uh, news de newsworthy stories that I think are positive news stories. Not only is this going to help Atlanta maybe with ticket sales in the future because it might be better races, but it also might simplify the schedule a little bit. Um, and also, imagine if they, like, went out to Sonoma for the second race, right? Because as is seen throughout the whole season... Right when you look at TV ratings, the Daytona 500 obviously the, the most, the highest rated because it's the Super Bowl of NASCAR. Atlanta is probably the second highest rated, then Vegas, and then maybe you know an NBC race like Daytona or Talladega. But the higher rated races are towards the beginning of the season. It's no coincidence that you know people tune in for the 500, they tune in for the next few races, they get bored of it, and slowly ratings dwindle down to the fans that are hardcore and will watch throughout the whole season. And uh, we actually saw here at Vegas the ratings go up because, I'm going to guess, because the new package, people want to see how it was going to work out. Uh, we saw that with the Roval. They tried something new. Viewership increased. Here again, they tried something new with the package. Viewership increased. The question is, will that increase stay for the next few races where this package is used? Will ratings go back down to where they have been? But I will say this. With the way NASCAR has been going lately, with drivers retiring, Gordon Jr. Stewart, you know, Danica, all these big names, retiring Edwards, you know, um, the fact that they have so far this season stayed level, if not gone up a little bit, very, very, very important for NASCAR because we saw this with IndyCar. They plummeted all the way down to, you know, rock bottom. Only where to go from rock bottom is, you know, first to level and then up. We saw last season with, you know, most IndyCar races. They le they leveled out, which is good for that sport because they're obviously at the bottom. They're below, I think, a one in terms of ratings. Um, you know, I just think that's, that, that, that's just great news. And they, um, so NASCAR, they've been on the da downward spiral since 2007. 2006 was their highest rate, Daytona 500. And then ever since then, it's been downward, especially the last few seasons where huge names have retired. Um, it's just... You know, I, I, I think it's good for NASCAR to just level out at this point. If they could just break even, get, you know, maybe 100,000 less viewers, not, you know, n n no big, like, decrease. If it goes down, like, 0.1, if it goes from, like, a 2.5 to a 2.4, that's still a win for NASCAR in my book. If it stays flat, even bigger win. If it goes up a little bit, like it did at Las Vegas, major win for NASCAR because they tried something new and it got people to watch. The question is, will it keep people watching? I don't know. But... Imagine, go, going back to what my point was going to be until I kind of went off on a tangent. You know, as I was saying, ratings at the beginning of the season are always higher. Um, if they went Daytona and then Sonoma immediately after, imagine if people tuned in to Daytona liked it and said, you know what, maybe I'll start watching NASCAR and then the next race is that road course. Road course races are awesome in NASCAR, okay? Imagine if someone went and watched the road race, you know, after the 500, and then they're like, man, NASCAR might not be so bad after all. And then, say, they go to Auto Club, which is another fantastic racetrack. Phoenix, you know, Vegas sometimes can be good depending on the weather and whatnot. Um, and then you go on these short tracks with Martinsville, Bristol. Atlanta's a good racetrack, you know, and then Richmond, Talladega. The beginning part of the schedule, if it is shaped properly, and you get these good racetracks in and, you know, going and just work together with the racetracks, it could form a just explosion 
of great things. I'm really looking forward to seeing when the schedule is released, what changes they make to the schedule because that is probably the one thing I'll be looking forward to the most until April is seeing what the schedule is going to look like, how it's going to form, you know, what race are going to be put where, which races are going to change place with other races, will they change any chase races, you know, is the West Coast Swing going to be races two through four? two through four is Sonoma gonna move up with the west coast swing so we go there when it's nice and green you know will we get another road course whenever 2021 comes around will we get more short tracks will Nashville be in the schedule will Rockingham be in good enough shape because they have been coming back man they shared a photo a few days ago of the racing surface and it looks like it it, it looks like they've done an amazing job remodeling that racetrack getting it back going they share a photo of the surface very abrasive like it always has been Will Expanding Trucks possibly return to that racetrack, which could lead into a future Cup Series race back at Rockingham? So much working for NASCAR at this point. They have to capitalize on it, though, and I feel like they will because Jim France behind the helm knows what he is doing, has been at the track constantly, you know, and he, he's just there. You know, even if you don't see him, he's there at the racetrack. Was Brian Fran did, did anyone ever see Brian France at the racetrack besides a few races? No. And it's good for the CEO of NASCAR to be at the racetrack and you know doing stuff seeing what they see, seeing what the drivers want seeing you know talking with teams you know in my opinion this is probably the best shape nascar has been in since way back in like 2004 you know i feel like this is the best shape nascar has been in since like 2004 and i mean I, at this point i see that Na i think nascar has reached rock bottom um if not now in a few years there they will reach rock bottom and it'll be up from there. And I feel like the big breaking point is 2021 when we get new tracks, new car, you know, whatever. That will be the breaking point of NASCAR. Will it make or break NASCAR? I mean, it's going to be it's gonna be a, a few years till we see that, but I'm excited for the future. That's all I can say. So, I thank you guys for watching. Schedules, Nashville, and online races. My goodness. Another good day of news in terms of NASCAR. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys for the next video.